sorry, I thought I was alone. I just got out of the shower. You know though, I was just gonna put on a perfume. I feel so fresh and clean. Come on, I'll tell you about some of them. You can help me decide which one to wear. So how's everybody doing? Sorry, I didn't expect to see anybody right out of the shower. You startled me. Let me just dry off and we'll get into it. All right, so if everybody's comfortable, let's get started. Today I thought it'd be fun to talk about those so fresh and so clean fragrances, like the ones you put on straight out of the shower when you know maybe it's a day at home and you just wanna smell put together, or maybe you wear multiple fragrances throughout the day, so this is the first fragrance you put on. Maybe it's the last fragrance before you go to bed at night. You know, you get out of the shower, you spritz it on, it puts you in that Ooh, mode where you can just log off for the night. For me, ironically, very sen sensitive, and so I have to be really careful. There are certain notes that will just straight out give me a migraine, or if I already have a migraine, I have to be really careful what fragrance I wear, if at all. So these are ones that maybe I might turn to on a day where I feel a migraine brewing, but I still want to wear fragrance and be put together. You're going to want to stick around because the last one I'm going to talk about today is one of my all-time favorite fragrances, so you're not going to want to miss it. So the first one we're going to talk about is by the House of Oud. It's called The Time. This is a really nice citrus fragrance. The Time is very green tea-ish. That is probably the main note that I smell. Sometimes I wonder if there is a note more fresh and clean than a green tea or a white tea scent. The House of Oud also, uh, I'm going to have to do a more in-depth video on them sometime but the bottles are absolutely gorgeous. Every single one of them is so creative. It's the bottle and then this, uh, the, the, the topper is like a large stone, but each of the stones is just uh, really artistically done. So this is the bottle for the House of Oud, if you can see. It's just, I mean, just so gorgeous. You can see the, that the top is like an egg with that gorgeous detailing. It's just beautiful, beautiful bottles. Each of their fragrances, now granted, this is a lighter citrusy tea-ish scent, so it's probably not gonna have the silage and the, the presence that maybe an amber or a more oud uh, fragrance would have, but the duration, the life that the longevity of these fragrances is really impressive. Despite it being such a light and fresh fragrance, it actually has a surprising duration of life. The Time by House of Oud is a floral fragrance for both women and men. It was launched in 2018. The nose behind the fragrance is Christian Calibro. The top notes are chamomile, bergamot, and wormwood. Middle notes oolong tea, lemon verbena, and iris. Base notes black tea, amber, cedar, and musk. The green tea and the lemon verbena probably are the strongest notes for me, but it's this is just a really enjoyable fragrance. If you're like me and you're sensitive to migraine or scents but still want to try to attempt a scent, this is definitely one that you should check out. Again, it's The Time by House of Oud. Speaking of green tea, let's move into Vulgari's. They actually have two tea. They have a white tea one as well as a green tea one. I'm actually not as partial to the green tea one. It has a bit of uh, a soapy smell to it to me. The dry down's a bit sweeter. It reminds me a bit of a perfume my mom used to wear growing up. I think it was Oscar de la Renta. Um, however, their white tea I do really enjoy. Actually, the, the name of it is Eau Perfume Eau Te Blanc by Vulgari. Uh, it's a floral woody musk for women and men. It was launched in 2003. The nose behind the fragrance is Jacques Cavalier. Top notes are tea, artemisia, bergamot, orange blossom, and bitter orange. Middle notes, pepper, cardamom, coriander, and the base notes, musk, woody notes, jasmine, amber, and rose. So it, again, it's just a very light, uh, tea citrus fragrance with um, again a, a decent silage and a decent duration of life you're not going to be like the heaviest scent trail in the world but it's a nice fresh and clean fragrance uh, to wear again I'll uh, caveat that most of these fragrances are probably day scents anything light floral fresh uh, personally I see as more day morning uh, possibly professional scents maybe a super casual date. They're not, uh, I wouldn't say they're the most formal or like super professional dinner date uh, theater type fragrances. 
wait for this to stop. So I'm sorry if I sound a bit winded today. I know I've talked to you guys a little bit about my anxiety. So I've had some things going on today and it's just kind of making my heart race. So I'm a bit winded from that, but uh, forgive me. Moving on. So another one I actually own, but I couldn't find. Again, a bit dated, but you know, it's a classic in terms of fresh and clean scents. And that is Elizabeth Arden's green tea. Green tea by Elizabeth Arden is a citrus aromatic fragrance for women. Green tea was launched in 1999. The nose behind this fragrance is ba -ba -da -bum, Francis Kirk Dijon. The top notes are lemon, bergamot, mint, orange peel, and rhubarb. Middle notes, jasmine, oak moss, fennel, musk, carnation, and white amber. Base notes, green tea, jasmine, oak moss, musk, celery seeds, caraway cloves, and amber. That's interesting how jasmine, oak moss, and musk are both in the, the middle as well as the base notes. However, we all know uh, Francis Kirk Dijon is an artist of fragrances. He's created many fragrances that I have come to just love. I'm not surprised that he is the artist behind this one. I wore this in, gosh, I wore this fragrance, I think in my early 20s. We go back a, a little bit, but it's a super, Super fresh and clean fragrance. It's sweet without being overpowering. The kind of fragrance that just makes you feel happy. It's just a sweet and delightful fragrance without being overbearing. Uh, it's not going to give you a headache from the strength of the fragrance, at least not me personally. It's sweet without being like sickingly sweet. It's just a fresh sweet, like a, like a sweetened green tea. I mean, that that's it. It's a, it's a sweetened iced green tea. Of all the fragrances we're talking about today, I'd say that this is probably one of the, one of the top three that I would recommend. Hmm, maybe not three. One of the top five uh, that I would recommend if you're wanting a, just a fresh, feminine, lovely fragrance. I will say uh, Elizabeth Arden Green Tea is also, they have different flankers now of it. I haven't really experienced too many of them. I, I'm ju I just like the classic. I'd be interested to try some of them. If you guys have tried any of the, the flankers of this, the variations like Mandarin Green Tea, I think there is. Um, I, I looked at the list the other day and I'm sure that there's quite the variety. Uh, but if you've tried any of these, please let me know if there are ones that I should check out. Let's get the conversation started. Speaking of Francis Kirk Dijon, the next one we're going to talk about is also by uh, Francis Kirk Dijon, and that is Gentle Fluidity Silver. I did contemplate including A La Rose Femme by Francis Kirk Dijon, as well as Lome Rose by Maison Francis Kirk Dijon, which also is a nice, fresh fragrance. However, sometimes rose can be touch and go with people if, you know, it's it's light for some and heavy for others. So I hesitated to include it only for that reason. I very much enjoy both of those fragrances. I don't think that they're super overpowering, but if you're sensitive to rose, you might. If you are looking for a more rose, if you are looking for a more rose-leaning, fresh scent, I definitely would consider those. A la Rose Femme by Maison Francis Kirk Dijon, as well as Lome Rose by Maison Francis Kirk Dijon, which I did review and I'll include that link in this video. Another really nice one, which is pretty fresh, but again, you'd really have to enjoy that citrus rose note to it, is uh, Delina a la Rose which also is a very enjoyable fragrance. I also did a video on that one, which I will include. And then one more rose leaning tea scent is one that I haven't yet reviewed, but intend to because I'm going to be doing another video that's including it in the future. So make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be alerted when that one comes out. However, that is, however, the fragrance I'm speaking of is Fleur de Té Rose Bulgare by Creed. That one is a floral green fragrance, so it's got that tea, that green tea note to it, but it also has that rose, and it starts off more on the, um, the heavier rose, which is why I hesitate to include it in this video because it's, again, it starts off with that heavy rose note, but then dissipates in the dry down to a much more uh, fresh and clean approachable green tea with the backwash of the rose. So again, a very lovely scent. You just need to, to know that there is that rose note in there, whether or not you're sensitive to that one. Just to speak briefly on that, uh, Rose Bulgare was launched in 1890. The nose behind Henry Creed, third generation. Uh, the top notes are bergamot and citruses, middle notes Bulgarian rose and green tea flower, the base note, the traditional Creed ambergris. There are some interesting tidbits about this fragrance, but I'm gonna wait to reveal them in my video that I do more in depth on this fragrance. So again, stay tuned, hit subscribe. Okay, wow, that was a huge tangent. I'm sorry, you know, I'm all over the place today. Anyway, uh, again, back to Gentle Fluidity Silver 
by Maison Francis Kirk de Jean. I did talk about this one in another video as well. I will link it here. It pairs with Gentle Fluidity Gold, which is a much more powdery uh, feminine fragrance. This one I would consider more on the masculine side. It's a, uh, it's a fizzy fragrance, I would say. It's more like a, a gin and tonic, uh, gin and seltzer type fragrance. It is considered an aromatic spicy fragrance for both men and women. Launched in 2019. With the interesting thing about silver and gold is that they both contain the exact same notes, which again attests to the artistry of Maison Francis Kirk de Jean, that he's able to use these same notes but spin them in so different ways that he's able to produce both gold and silver, which are two completely different fragrances. So the notes that uh, both fragrances consist of are juniper berries, nutmeg, coriander musks, ambery woods, and vanilla. So the goal of Maison Francis Kirk de Jean in using this duo was in fact to use these notes and create the two different uh, profiles of a scent, one being masculine and one being the feminine. In uh, silver, the nutmeg and the ambery woods notes are dominant and release that vibrant and comfortable trail. The juniper berry essence is what creates that ultra fresh uh, aromatic note to it, which, you know, like I said, the gin and seltzer type balanced by the spicy notes of the nutmeg and then the dry down of the ambery woods, which brings it back to that sweet place. An enticing cologne for the guys. Very crisp, aromatic. I hesitate to say it's a bit more on the winter side as opposed to summer, but again, that gin frappe is always kind of cooling. Juniper berry, I think, is always an interesting note to wear in the summer because of that kind of cooling aspect to it. So again, that was Gentle Fluidity Silver by Maison Francis Kirk de Jean. We'll move to a whole different fragrance house now, and that would be the House of Creed. Creed has a multitude of fragrances that would fall, I feel, into this ca category of uh, fresh and clean. And if you're a fan of Creed, you know that each of these, each of his fragrances contains a vast history or story behind it. It was hard for me to go through knowing Creed's fragrances and not include a multitude of them. But in uh, trying to narrow down those options, I landed on three of them. The first one being Royal Water. Royal Water is a citrus aromatic fragrance for both men and women. Uh, it was launched in 1997. The nose behind the fragrance, Olivier Creed. Top notes, citruses and mint. Middle notes, juniper berries and basil. Base notes, musk and ambergris. So again, this is one of those juniper berry fragrances. It opens with uh, the citrus mixed with the mint and then dries down into uh, like the juniper berry and the basil. So a more um, like herbal juniper berry and then uh, musk and ambergris again on the base, which gives it that rounded out foundation. Uh, Royal Water is a really interesting fragrance. It's again, very fresh and clean. It's great for uh, right out of the shower. It's uh, kind of have to, has that cooling effect to it. I think it leans a bit more on the masculine side. That's my personal take on it. If you do in, uh, it's not like the super heavy masculine though. It's not strong of uh, particular notes, which I would feel lean way more masculine. It's more kind of one of those that's just on the boundary line, like uh, YSL Libra or something like that, where it has cologne aspects to it without necessarily being a total full on full masculine. The next one is uh, Silver Mountain Water by Creed. This is again an aromatic fragrance for both women and men. It was launched in 1995, the nose behind Olivier Creed. Top notes bergamot and mandarin orange, middle notes green tea, black currant, base notes musk, petrograin, sandalwood, and galbanum. So again, this fragrance opens with those citrus notes, the bergamot, the mandarin, followed by the green tea and the black currant, so it continues that freshness. And then the base again, the galbanum, musk, sandalwood, and petrograin. The petrograin kind of brings in that citrus still, but the sandalwood, the musk, the galbanum really kind of round it out and give it that rounded foundation to end the fragrance on. Interesting tidbit about Silver Mountain Water. One, it goes really well with Virgin Island Water, if you ask me personally. Another tidbit about Silver Mountain Water by Creed is that it was created because of Olivier Creed's love of skiing. The silver cap to it is actually supposed to draw on that, that tie to a, a glistening snow-capped mountaintop. 
Silver Mountain Water was uh, created to kind of depict that feeling of the, the sparkling high mountain streams of the Swiss Alps. If you haven't been to or seen the Swiss Alps there, they're very impressive mountains with just the, that beautiful snow and the silver cap does just kind of tie it all together with this pretty bow. It's silver is just so clean and clear and that pure snow, that pure white snow that isn't polluted with smoke and smog and dog potty, you know, it's just, breathtaking and that kind of is the feeling that silver mountain water evokes just that crisp clear sparkling cold streams of water and snow all right and the last one that we're going to talk about by creed is another one that i spoke of previously in a comparison with viking cologne and that would be neuroli sauvage neuroli sauvage is a citrus aromatic fragrance again for men and women created in 1994 again by olivia creed uh, the top notes bergamot and grapefruit middle notes neroli and verbena base note ambergris so as i mentioned in that video the neroli refers to uh, the blossom of the bitter orange tree and the sauvage referring to wild neroli sauvage is a very citrus fragrance as obviously you have the neroli flower you have the the bergamot the grapefruit the lemon verbena, all very citrus notes with the, the smooth mellowing out of the ambergris. So if you're looking for a fresh and clean, very, very citrus fragrance, this would be a good one for you. Again, because it does have, since it is heavy on the citrus, the duration and life of this fragrance probably isn't gonna be the longest. Citrus notes just don't tend to last as long as like a sandalwood or patchouli or an ambergris would. But it's a nice uh, fresh and clean fragrance if you are one to wear multiple fragrances throughout the day. If you just want a fresh fragrance right out of the shower, maybe just a quick spritz to uh, energize you throughout the day because those citrus notes also wake you up. Random thoughts by Catherine. So the smell of grapefruit, actually, if you smell it on someone subconsciously, you tend to think that person's younger than they are. I learned that little tidbit in psychology, but you, uh, I don't know, there's just something about that fragrance that makes you subconsciously feel that person is younger. So if you're starting to feel a little bit up there, pull out that grapefruit. So the next fragrance house we're talking about is Clive Christian. I uh, will link yet another video here to it. But uh, the two fragrances I'm going to speak of are 1872 Mandarin and then 1872 for women. Uh, there is also an 1872 for men, which is just as fresh and clean. Just not talking about it. So uh, 1872 Mandarin is a shipper floral fragrance for women and men. Uh, it was launched in 2016. The nose behind the fragrance is Beverly Bain. Top notes, Mandarin orange, uh, bergamot, nectarine, lime, basil, lemon, ginger, and coriander. Middle notes, lavender, rose, freesia, orchid, lily of the valley, jasmine, and violet. Base notes, moss, vetiver, cedar, amber, musk, patchouli, and saffron. Fragrances by Clive Christian are really hard to describe because kind of like Tiziana Terenzi fragrances, there are so many notes and so many ingredients that it's hard to pinpoint exactly what notes that you're experiencing in the fragrance. It also, uh, Clive Christian is known for using like 25 pure essential oils in his fragrances, which gives the duration of the fragrance just an impressive life. These fragrances last and last and last. Clive Christian is also on the more expensive side, I will note, but again, you are paying for high quality. The duration, the silage, the scent trail of some of these is beast mode. However, this, this isn't one of them. This isn't one of the beast mode ones. It's just so fresh and light and clean. So again, 1872 is similar to the 1872 for men with more of a Mandarin note. So one of the really cool things about 1872 Mandarin is that it really touches on the foundation of the creation of Clive Christian. It goes back to the main couple of why there is the crown on uh, Clive Christian's bottles to begin with. So 1872 Mandarin, the, the cool story around it is that it's a romance story between uh, Prince Albert and Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria, who gave permission to use the crown. At their engagement, Prince Albert gifted Queen Victoria with a porcelain brooch of a neroli flower. A neroli flower, an orange blossom, uh, as a symbol of his love and devotion. Orange blossoms are a symbol of pure love and fertility. The flower became a symbol of love 
for the couple, as well as a symbol of love around the world. It's truly unique as a plant because of both flowers and fruits at the same time. So the neroli flowers will be blossoming around the ribonene fruit. To pay tribute to this love story, Clive Christian created 1872 Mandarin and X neroli as a limited edition pair. Again, 1872 Mandarin is a limited edition, so who knows how long it will be around, but it's definitely a fragrance worth checking out if you're able. The next 1872 for Women by Clive Christian is a floral fruity fragrance launched in, wait for it, 1872. So this fragrance is remarkable. It's very clean, it's very pure, it's unique and different to anything that you will experience in a fragrance. It's so, refreshing and it's one of those where you're not just you're not like in love with it like that but it's one of those where you you just can't stop smelling it it's just captivating it's the top notes bergamot amalfi lemon rosemary tangerine pineapple and blueberry middle notes lily of the valley violet osmanthus rose freesia jasmine and orchid base notes oak moss virginia cedar musk sandalwood Guake wood and patchouli. And this, uh, this fragrance has the classical DNA of a century old tradition. Uh, it's precise. It's created according to the formula and the methods that were originally used by Crown Perfumery. And all ingredients are strictly vegetable in order to perpetuate a lasting formula of fragrance. And like I said, this fragrance will last you. It just has such a remarkable duration of life. It's astounding. And again, you will enjoy every second of it. So the next one we're gonna talk about is by Nishanae Colonies. Caveat, if you're sensitive to Lily of the Valley, this is not gonna be the scent for you. For me, it starts off very heavy on the citrus and the Lily of the Valley. And Lily of the Valley's kind of touch and go with me, which is why I mentioned that in this as caveat. Anyway. Uh, so Colonies is a citrus fragrance for both women and men. It was launched in 2018. Uh, the top notes, bergamot, green tea, jasmine, and lemon. Middle notes, grapefruit, lily of the valley. Base notes, neroli, musk, and vetiver. Initially, you smell the, the lemon, the bergamot, the lily of the valley. I think the jasmine, you can faintly smell. Then the green tea enters a bit more. And then in the dry down, more that vetiver and the musk. Again, it's a citrus fragrance, so it doesn't have the longest duration. I think it might lean ever so slightly more masculine than feminine. But again, I think it is another one of those unique fragrances that I think it's interesting, the, the smoothness of the citrus with just like the hint of the wood to it. It gives it, the citrus notes, just a bit of an edge, I think, with that vetiver as the dry down. But all in all, a unique fragrance worth checking out. Again, that was... Uh, Colonies by Nishanae. Nishanae being a Turkish uh, fragrance line, the one and only renowned fragrance located in Istanbul. Speaking of vetiver, let's move into Bal de Frique by Byredo. I'm going to be very uh, brief with it. Bal de Frique was created, was created as a memoir of travels throughout um, Africa. It is considered an amber woody fragrance for both women and men, launched in 2009. The nose behind the fragrance is Jerome Epinette. Top notes being Amalfi lemon, taggets, black currant, bergamot, African orange flower, middle notes violet, cyclamen, and jasmine, base notes of vetiver, amber, musk, and Virginia cedar. Belle de Freak is nothing like anything you'll have experienced before. It, it is a woodsy fragrance, but yet really super smooth and airy. It's one of those fragrances that just pulls you to it and you can't quite pinpoint exactly why. It's just so unique and and grounding. I think it's it does start off with a hint of the citrus, but then it quickly moves into those uh, the violet, the vetiver, the cedar, the musk. The fragrance is a mix of Parisian avant-garde as well as African culture based around uh, vibrant expression. The top notes are bergamot, lemon, neroli, African marigold, and buchu. Middle notes, violet, jasmine, cyclamen. The base, the black amber, musk, vetiver, and Moroccan cedar wood. If you like the more mellow, woodsy, airy type scents, this is definitely one worth checking out. I will say the duration isn't the best, but there are lotions and body wash and oil that you can wear that will extend the life. The next one is Inflorescence by Byredo. It's a floral fragrance for women. It was launched in 2013. Again, it's a very light 
uh, airy floral fragrance. Byredo, again like Creed, has a multitude of fragrances that are just really fresh and airy. So it was hard to choose which ones to talk about, but again I went with, okay, if I had a headache, which ones would I be able to wear? And uh, Ball de Freak and Inflorescence were the top two. Inflorescence is very, it's an innocent fragrance. It's celebrating the awakening of nature in the beginning of spring. So again, Inflorescence was launched in 2013. Top notes, Pink Freesia and Rose. Middle notes, Lily of the Valley and Magnolia. The base note is Jasmine. Personally, I feel that the Rose and the Magnolia are the strongest notes in this fragrance. Again, it's really smooth. It's really, it's like a rounded floral. It's not like a super sweet floral. It's more just a rounded, smooth floral. It's a great spring fragrance or super fresh fragrance, like right out of the shower. Like this is the, this would be a great fragrance for that. 1872 for women and inflorescence are just like, whew, just fresh and clean right out of the shower fragrances. Honorable mentions, by the way, for Bye Bye Rado included uh, ones that I wanted to include but decided not to just because they were just a bit on the stronger side would be La Tulip. And speaking of honorable mentions too, that, gosh, there were so many that I wanted to include. Some like old school, like uh, DKNY Be Delicious or DKNY Delicious, which was more on the sweeter side, so opted not to use it, plus it's just such a OG fragrance. Uh, another one, Aqua de Gio, Joya, Aqua de Joya, which uh, again, touch and go, it is very fresh and clean, but it also can give me a headache sometimes, so leaving that one out. There, there, just, there are so many fresh and clean scents, but again, I picked like the top ones that I thought were the most fresh and the most clean you know, that straight out of the shower feeling for you. So the last two, bum ba da bum Moonlight in Heaven, which is heaven of a fragrance. It's a bit sweet initially, and the duration really isn't that great, but oh my gosh, it is just so enjoyable while it lasts. It's fresh, it's enticing, it's one of those that you just, you just wanna swim in it. It's stepping out of a pool, you know, and you have that, that cool feeling wrapped around you, a bit on the sweeter side, so take note of that. Uh, Moonlight in Heaven by Killian is an aromatic fragrance for both women and men. Launched in 2016, Khalees Becker was the nose behind it. Top notes, grapefruit, pink pepper, and lemon. Middle notes, mango, coconut, and rice. Base notes, vetiver, and tonka bean. Y'all that have been watching my videos know I'm a sucker for coconut. I can only vaguely smell the coconut. It's in there, but it's not like one of the stronger pronounced notes. I'd say the mango, the grapefruit, the lemon, the vetiver the rice it's it's just such a intoxicating sensual fresh fragrance definitely one to check out i think the price point's like 250 for the regular size bottle and the duration isn't that long which i really wish that they would work on because oh my gosh i just would if i could spray this on every 30 minutes of the day i'd be doing it and bump it a bum and lastly also by Killian, one of the most fresh, the most clean, and that is Killian Bamboo Harmony. A citrus aromatic fragrance for both men and women launched in 2012. Nose behind again is Khalees Becker. Top notes, bergamot, neroli, bitter orange. Middle notes, tea, bamboo, mimosa, and spices. Base notes, fig leaf, holly, and oak moss. Now, if you enjoy Vulgari's white tea that we spoke of. If you enjoy green tea by Elizabeth Arden or the thyme by House of Oud, this is one you are going to really like. Again, the life is not the best. Maybe if you spray it on your clothes, it can last longer. But oh my gosh, you will enjoy every second while you have it on. It is so fresh, it is so clean. It's inspired from the tale of the bamboo cutter which is a Japanese folk tale. The bamboo stands for the sign of symbol of human perfection. In Chinese culture, the means to practice calligraphy with. Being that the main material uh, the calligrapher brushes are made out of is bamboo. It therefore symbolizes art, beauty, and to quote the men of letters. Bamboo Harmony by Killian focuses on the impression of a sip of white tea drank drunk off of bamboo bamboo harmony is it's fresh and clean it's sweet but yet has that hint of a wood in the undertone it's a really serene delicious fragrance i could easily have talked about a million more uh, fresh and clean scents, but these are probably the highest, most fresh and clean fragrances that I have experienced lately. If this is the type of scent you were looking for, I hope this helped you out. Again, my name's Catherine. Thanks for stopping by my channel. If you are a return guest, 
Uh, thank you. I appreciate you. If you're new, welcome. Please hit subscribe and join my family of viewers. Uh, I'd love to converse with you all. So if you've experienced any of these fragrances, I'd love to hear about it. If there are any fresh and clean fragrances I left out that you think I need to try, please comment below and let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I hope y'all are staying healthy and enjoying your summers if you're in America. I guess it depends where you are in the world. Anyway, I hope y'all are doing well. I appreciate you all and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye. It's made, it's 